In my experience, there's some traits that are common among students that do well in my calculus classes. Uh, I've taught a lot of calculus sections over the years, and uh, these are the things that are pretty typical for everybody who gets a high A in those classes. Um, number one, uh, there's a significant amount more time invested in a calculus class than probably what you're accustomed to in your other math classes in the past. Um, if you're taking calculus, you're in all likelihood probably pretty bright and you've probably done well in like pre-cal and your algebra classes and whatnot. And uh, a lot of times what will happen, a, a negative thing that will happen is uh, you've done so well in those other classes and you finish the work pretty quickly. It only takes you 15, 20 minutes for the homework and you finish the test in about 35 minutes and you think it should be the same way in calculus and people don't invest as much time as they should. Uh, calculus is a different animal because you have theory and algebra. Um, the classes you've had prior to this have probably been more algebra focused and you just kind of churn through maybe 50 problems for homework or something like that where you have packets of you know this many of this type and 10 of this type and 15 of this type and you just get in this mode of just you know plug and chug and just plowing right through them but now you have to be proficient at not only the algebra of how to do something like take a derivative or integrate something using u substitution or whatever but you also have to under understand the theory of why you're having to do these things so there's two things to think about you have to take a problem a calculus problem and first of all think what is it that i'm supposed to do and then you actually have to follow through and do it. So uh, that only comes, doesn't matter who you are, it only comes with practice and investing more time than you probably think you need to. Number two, um, know your instructor's name. I know that sounds silly, but um, you know, I'll, I'll have a lot of students. I'll advise a lot of students and you know, they'll say, well, I'm struggling in calculus or whatever. And I say, well, who, who do you have? Well, I don't really know if you, if, you know, if you don't know your instructor's name, you're probably not invested enough in the class. You've probably never talked to them uh, as far as office hours goes or asked for help before or after the class. And make sure that he or she knows your name. Uh, it just creates a bond there. You can pick up a lot of um, information just informally before class, after class, walking between classes. Um, they're just usually somebody, you, you know, believe it or not, you'd want to talk to and just kind of pick their brain about things um, because they might can explain something a slightly different way uh, or just hearing something a second time or, or in a slightly different way uh, can really clarify some, some of these tough calculus concepts. Uh, number three, office hours. You know, um, there's this theory and the algebra. If you're struggling with either one, you know, we, we have uh, office hours and that's probably the most underutilized resource in the entire college. You know, we have counseling and career programs and we have tutoring centers and we have this and we have that. You know, who better to learn from than the guy teaching the class? You know, now obviously some instructors might be tougher to talk with than others or or, um, you know, we try, we try to be as best, you know, as, as good as we can as far as um, interacting with students. And uh, I, that's something I enjoy doing. I enjoy sitting down with students. And uh, you just be amazed. It doesn't take long. It's not like you even have to be there all day. Um, you know, instructors have stuff that they have to do. But uh, 10, 15 minutes, and usually you're good. I mean, you can quickly just pick out, you know, what it is you're struggling with in a topic. And they can help get you back on track. And then off you go, and you're on your way. Um, it also creates that kind of um, out of class, you know, uh, relationship between you and the instructor. That's always good and kind of gets back to number two, helping, uh, you know, their name and they know your name and, and kind of builds that relationship there. Uh, number four is a huge one. Uh, display of work and uh, a lot of times uh, and I, I'll, I'll admit um, this was one of the things I struggle with when I took calculus uh, was you know uh, we're used to these plug and chug type classes where uh, if, you know if you're pretty bright in math you can do a lot of the work in your head and I always thought that you know the teacher or the instructor would be impressed if I could do it in as least amount of steps as possible I don't know why I thought that but that's that's the way I thought and uh, so I would try to do as much as I can. But you have to understand in calculus, um, it's 
primarily about displaying your answer. It's showing the instructor that you understand the process that's, that's being done. Uh, I would use the analogy sometimes in class of, you know, if I'm teaching, you know, a lot of engineering students and then later they get a job where they're just uh, commissioned to build a bridge, that, that's their job is to build a bridge. And obviously there's some mathematics that would uh, support the, um, the, you know, the integrity of the bridge. And, and so, you know, if uh, the mayor or whoever is this asking you to build this bridge comes to you and says, is this bridge safe to drive cars across? Well, uh, you can't say to him, well, just trust me, it's good. You know, you, you can't do that. Everything has to be what we call rigorously proven. It has to be shown, uh, displayed on concrete steps on a firm foundation that really nobody can argue with you. So um, if you have sloppy handwriting, this is, you know, guys have a terrible time with this. I see it all the time. It looks like chicken scratch. Um, that's not an excuse. Force yourself, demand yourself to when you write things down, if, if you assuming you have a written test, to write them down to where it almost looks like a solutions manual. I know that sounds extreme, but use neat print, order things well on the page, um, write the problem in each successive line. I'm not, I'm not talking about writing copious amounts of material. We don't want to, as instructors, read pages and pages for a simple problem, but the logic needs to be there and it has to be clear and it has to be easy to read. And that's almost as important as the theory and the algebra you're doing. You have these three categories and usually the grade rises and falls on these three. There's theory. That's a student who knows what they want to do. There's um, the algebra, that's the actual putting it into practice. And then you have the communication, that's the display of work, assuming you have a written test. And usually somebody who gets all three extremely uh, well uh, gets a high, high A. And if you get a B, you could have gotten a B because you um, knew the theory really well and your algebra was correct, but you just wrote it very, very poorly and the instructor couldn't follow what you're doing well. well. Um, maybe you know the theory well and you displayed it awesome, but you just made careless errors in your algebra that, you know, that could cause your grade to suffer. And the poor grades are the students who don't know the theory that well, they make bad algebra mistakes and they don't display their work correctly. So, so pay special attention to how you're writing your work down. Um, I'm not super big on uh, educational uh, philosophy and all that. Um, but here's one thing I very much buy into. Uh, you'll hear a lot of education people talk about this a lot. The concept of metacognition. I know it sounds like a, uh, just a psychology type word and it is, but, um, but metacognition is how well you understand what you know. Um, now I know that that sounds a little confusing, but, um, when you're prepping for a test, some students go in with the mindset that they just hope they're going to do well, but they don't know w what they know well and what they don't know well. So pay conscious attention when you're studying for your test and ask yourself, do I know this section really well or not? Because, um, knowing what you don't know is a extremely helpful thing because you you know what to prep more for to, to spend more time studying um don't just you know pay no attention to it and just kind of hope you do well on the test ask yourself how well do i know every topic that's going to be on that test that'll that'll be a huge help all right number six this is an obvious one but it's huge read read the book uh, so many students try to take my class notes or the lecture notes or, you know, just what they remember from class and just try to study based off of that. Or they'll try to just do homework problems. But you have to remember, you know, publishers have sunk uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars into these textbooks and writing them and uh, writing them well and paying authors lots of money to do these. And I, I know a lot of people say, well, I just can't read a math textbook. Well, it's, it's, it is different than reading a novel. It's not like reading, you know, some, some fiction novel or something like that. And it's, I wouldn't even say it's easy per se, 
but the information's there and usually it's written fairly well, sometimes a little overly technical, but that's necessary sometimes. And so read, just read the textbook um, and, and just try to go through each section by section, read the examples, see how they work problems and, uh, and you'll be a lot better off. And the last one, number seven, I know I listed it last, but it, it might have actually been, should have been listed first. Prerequisite skills is so important. The upper level math classes um, have to assume you know things coming into the class. Unfortunately, we don't have time to start way back at the beginning of solving equations or factoring. We just don't have time to do that. And so, you know, um, we have, you have to know your trig, your trig identities, your um, trig functions. Um, it's absolutely imperative that you know your unit circle. Um, and this is kind of disappointing, but so many pre-calculus teachers and trig teachers, um, do not stress memorizing the unit circle. They'll let you have a cheat sheet on the test or they'll let you have this or, you know, well, you don't have to memorize that, but you get into calculus and you will be, uh, seriously, uh, handicapped if you don't know your unit circle well. So I've got some videos on the unit circle. You can watch those. Um, you have to know your unit circle really, really well. Uh, and your algebra skills, you know, uh, factoring, um, adding fractions, rational expressions, polynomials, evaluating functions, finding domain and range. You know, that's just imperative that you know these things going in, into the class. Um, you know, it really kills me, you know, when I, I'll, I'll hear students talk and they'll say, you know, well, we never learned the unit circle in pre-cal or we never had to, you know, do this. Or it's been 10 years since I've, you know, taken an algebra class. And I just know, you know, from day one, and usually it comes to fruition, that they're going to struggle in calculus. And uh, it's not because they're not smart. Um, and usually what happens is in this, you know, theory versus algebra, you know, type of deal, they will understand what I'm talking about and they'll know what they need to do, but they usually can't make it happen, right? You know, when it comes down time to actually taking a derivative or something, you'll figure out, you'll find out what that means when you get into calculus. Well, there's, there's the theory behind what you're doing, but then there's also the algebra that makes it happen. And usually that's where they'll struggle is the actual implementation of the theory. So um, just be cognizant of these things as you begin your calculus class. And I, I think you'll do really well, um, you know, just keep in close contact with your instructor. They can be a, a valuable resource to you. Don't be shy. They're just people. Um, I know they lecture in front of you guys, but um, usually they're more than happy to talk with you outside of class. And uh, so hopefully if you follow these tips, you'll succeed in your math class and, uh, and get an A in calculus.